Hey uh, guys, how are you then? Right, another video for you. Um, another how to, or not how to, how I do. Uh, and I'm actually filming this intro after the event. So that's why I know so much that's going to be in the film. Um, this is a sort of how I use DN models masks. DN models, go take a look at their website. They do some really, really good sets of um, masks for all sorts of sizes, scales and armor and everything. Um, and they really are good quality. And you'll see in this video um, that you can abuse them and use them and whatever. Um, the reason I'm doing this intro is because I just want to say that this video is quite long, quite drawn out. Stick with it. Fast forward through bits if you want to. But what I'm trying to do is show you how I'm using my common sense to use these masks. I couldn't find anything online or any anywhere showing you how to use insignia masks. So what I've done, I've taken the stars and bars and the circle K from this set, which uh, Mitko at the Air Models kindly send me to use as a guinea pig to make this video. And I've used a, uh, a Ravel 130 second scale Heinkel 111 wing as a test piece, which has been previously painted. Um, I start off by showing you about using the canopy masks for the B24 Liberator and just to see how the vinyl goes down, how it stretches. And it's really nice because I'm sure we've all had it where you use the Eddard type mask, the Kabuki tape, and you go around a compound curve. The compound curve is where they curve in both ways. And you'll find that it lifts um, sort of half an hour after you've put it down. A little area will just lift because it doesn't want to stretch. But the these vinyl masks stretch, go down and just stay. The one thing I have found through doing this test, it, it would appear that these masks kind of improve their adhesion with time. So I would advise if you're using them over a painted surface, put them on, do your work, get them off. Um, don't let them hang around on the model too long. You'll see in the last segment of this video, um, I actually left the, the mask on overnight. And, and then you'll see what happens at the end. It does lift a little bit of the paint. But then saying that, it's Ravel Aqua Colour paint. Um, I was doing a test with it and it's mixed with water and it's sprayed over a gloss surface. So, you know, what'd you expect? Um, but yeah, I'm really impressed. Uh, I'll show you how I tried doing it initially and it's basically how not to do it. I'm not gonna edit it out, I'm gonna put it in. Um, the thing is, I do these things, I make these mistakes so you don't have to. I got these for free. You know, when you get them, you'll have to buy them and I'm saving you money if you like. You can reuse them. You need to be careful with them. You can't go pulling them about because they will stretch. But what I found is when you, if you just put them down, they will actually pull themselves back together again. So, um, and you'll see that I've been taking them off and putting them back on and taking them off and putting them back on. And I can think of no other way other than what I'm showing you to do it. Because if you, if you were just doing roundels, say on a, on a Lancaster wing, you could remove the center mask and the outer mask and spray your blue. And then you could um, remove the, the mask from the sheet, I mean. And then you could get the part that covers the blue, put that on and then remove the other bit and spray the red. That wouldn't be difficult at all. Um, but the thing is with the stars and bars, obviously you've got the bars on the side and the star in the middle and they always have to be repositioned. So you, you have to have all of the masks on and then remove what you want to paint and then put them back on and then remove what you want to paint because each mask relies on each other for its position, if you see what I mean. So um, it is quite complex and like I say, it is quite lengthy. Stick with it. Um, I think you'll like the end result. I love the end result. I'm not going to show you the end result now because it'll spoil the video. But um, I've got it here in front of me. There it is. And uh, I think it's absolutely great. I will never use large decals again. I will be getting in touch with um, Mitko and saying, you know, can I have some of these, please? <laughs> um, 
but as you'll see in my review that I put up last night, he's he's kindly sent me a lot of um, a lot of bits and pieces and a full set for my uh, comet as well, which is just there, as you can see, uh, which somebody keeps asking me to build. So um, I will. Don't worry, I will. Uh, so anyway, let's get to it. I'll get to the bench and um, I'll edit it and make it as short as possible for you. But uh, it is going to be pretty drawn out. So go make yourself a cup of coffee. I'll see you later. Um, as you've probably seen, I've done quite a few reviews of the DN Models masks, uh, mainly for the Lancaster from HK Models and a few sets for the 30 second scale Liberator from, um, from Hobby Boss. And a little bit of a difference here. Um, I've done the review. Of course, reviewing a paper set of masks or a vinyl set of masks, should I say, is quite difficult. Uh, there's not really a lot to show. So what I thought I'd do is, um, it's kind of a quick, I'm going to go in a minute into um, using them as painting masks for insignia and stuff, which I've personally never done before. Um, but for this, for this little first part of segment of this video, I'm going to look at the, the set 32827024 and this is the one for the um, this is the windows and wheels canopy and canopy paint mask set for the B24J from Hobby Boss and I'm just going to concentrate on the outside so we've got an outside set and an inside set if you want to hear more about this have a look back at my review on them um, so yeah I'm going to pick up the sheet which says outside and I don't know if I can get the camera to pick it up but down here very faintly it says outside so what um what what Mitko's done with this set is actually numbered i don't know if i can get that but if you can pick it up i'll just move it around in front of the camera and hopefully at some point you'll pick something up and you'll see a letter and a number there and over here we've got t4 and what that relates to is the actual part that those masks are designed to fit so this is part t4 this is part of the uh, ball turret and i thought it would be probably one of the easiest to show you because it's quite small, I can get it in front of the camera and, and play with it. Um, so what he suggests is to remove the vinyl around the masks and then just use the mask. Now, the problem with doing that with this set is if you remove all the vinyl, you end up with um, a load of masks, but you haven't got the letters there. I mean, you can always use this as your legend, I guess. So I think what I'm going to do just for the um, for this demo, I think what I'm going to do is cut around them. Right. So as you're going to see, I've cut basically, I've cut the the vinyl sheet away from the outside. So I'm just left with the mass on there. So it's a lot easier to see. Now I normally work underneath a magnifying lens. So um, doing this without that magnifying lens may prove a little bit difficult, but we'll see. But I've noticed that what he's actually done here, he's made these slightly out of shape. As you can see, the shape. The shape of this glazed panel here is not exactly the same as the shape he's got there, but obviously it's designed for the curvature of the, because we've got a compound curve on here, and um, compound curve means curved both ways, and basically the mask needs to stretch around that. So I'm just going to get my the tip of my knife under the corner of one of these masks, lift it like that, and then I can get my tiny, tiny tweezers under and peel it away and then I'm going to offer it into this corner first there we go it's gone down in that corner just nudge it along and then just peeling it back That's gone down in there beautifully. Now I'm going to get a cocktail stick, which I should have had out. Sorry, guys. Just blunt the end. And now I can just push that down in there. And then pull this around. Yeah, I've got it slightly over that way, haven't I? So I just get the... You can see how easy it is to work with, how easy it is to remove. I'm just going to nudge it over this way. I'm, I'm making this look slightly more difficult than it is because, as I say, my eyesight isn't amazing. 
I am old and I would normally be doing this under a magnifier but um, you can see there the beauty of these I'm noticing straight away over over using the um, the kabuki type masks like the Eddard ones or the ones you get in your Tamiya kits the beauty of this is you can actually move it around and it stays put it doesn't come back but you can see there just pull that over I've, I've got it too low now haven't I so I'm just going to get under there peel it away and just bring it up slightly do the same again and there we go now I just need to pull that bottom over slightly and we can see that we've got pretty much a perfect fit that's gone down in all the corners And fits beautifully now I'll just do the other side just to show you that it's just me being a an old man should I say so I'm just going to put this down here put it into that radius corner first just Pushing it down, tapping it about, get my cocktail stick, rub it in like that. And there we go. And that's fitted in there beautifully, as you can see there if the camera will focus. So yeah, very nice indeed. Very nice set of masks. I'm sure if I look through up through my uh, magnifying glass I've got them slightly out but um, hopefully you can get the idea now the other beauty with these as you can see I've I've rolled around the edge of them with a cocktail stick and pushed them into all the corners and everything the other beauty with these is apparently once you've used them you can take them off put them back on the sheet and use them again so I'm just going to get my knife I need to be careful not to scratch my glazing because I'm sure you all know about the B24 with the uh, turret issue this is the one turret I think that is okay and there we go so that's how we use those and uh, yeah very impressed Okay, so now we're going to move on to something that I have never done before. I'm going to use the Insignia um, parts from this set and do a couple of different um, experiments. And I'll do it all for you, I say live on camera, obviously I'm going to shut down when I mix some paint and then let it dry and everything and then come back. And But basically I won't do anything off camera other than mix paint okay so um or let the paint dry I'll, I'll do that off camera because you really don't want to watch that do you no I didn't think so so um what I've got here is a wing as you can see it's a wing it's a, a Hunker 111 Ravel this is what I destroyed um, and basically what I'm gonna do I've painted two white patches on here and I haven't painted them quite big enough which is my stupid fault I did this earlier on about an hour and a half ago um, and what I should have done was looked at how big the insignia was before I actually did the um, before I did any any painting so um, what I'm going to do is put the insignia diagonally across that one and we'll use something else on this one and then just to prove that it's reusable I'll take the masks from here and we'll put the insignia over this here and and do that so um I've taken the outer vinyl off 
Uh, this is something that um, Mitko suggests in his instructions. And what you've basically got, when, when you first get it, when you open your pack, you've got a sheet like this. And what he's suggesting is to just come along and remove remove the outer sheet like this. Whoops, that's wanted to take everything with it. And just remove the outer sheet like so and leave the, the detail on there. So that's what I've done. Um, and that way I can see what I've got. So I've got my stars and bars there. So what I need to do, I need to mask the white bit, mask the outside and spray the blue. And we can see that it's probably easier actually to look at the wing. So we've got the, here's the insignia here. So I'm gonna use, I've got the white in the background already. So what I need to do is mask off the whole area because I don't really want to go painting and hopefully what I can do here is peel the whole thing off and it will all stay together that's what I'm hoping failing that I'll have to reassemble it all on the wing no it's not going to it's the outside's going to come off although well, I might be in luck Probably doing this for the first time ever live on camera is probably not very sensible. Yeah, it's not gonna, it just wants to, some wants to come away and some doesn't. So, what I'm gonna do is lay this down flat on the desk. Something's kinked up there. So, I'm gonna get my tweezers and I'm gonna lift lift this corner up and then as we go I'll push the push the other parts down back on the paper so that they stay like so and what we mustn't do is pull at all because we don't want to stretch the vinyl out of shape so what I'm going to do now is just lay this on this wing in this area here diagonally like that. And there we go. So I'm not pushing it down at all because I'm not sure if I've got it out of shape. But I'm going to push this corner down. We we'll use this as our reference and then I may have to adjust as we go. So I don't sure I'm not quite sure what's happened here. Something's got kinked. There we go. So I don't know if all of this will come off together. Maybe the star will come with it. Yes, it will with the look of it. There we go. So now I can position this oops inside of here. like so and the beauty of this stuff it just goes down and you can lift it and reapply it and lift it and reapply it like I just showed you with that um, canopy part it was uh, it was quite amazing how many times you could you could push it down roll it around pull it back off so I'm just going to put this down in fact I think what's probably favorable is to get the get this to lie down flat and then make the outside fit it so it might have been better off taking this off first but it looks like I've got a bit of And as I say guys, this is probably how to not do it. We are learning it together. Um, but it just shows you that a complete novice to this can do it because at the end of the day, I will get this done and it will look good. I can assure you. But like I said, this is not a video of somebody doing something who's done it a million times before. This is a video of someone having a go for the first time. There we go. Now 
as I see as well, no editing, no cutting the camera, no clipping the film, no nothing. What I'm going to do is peel that up there. Okay guys, now <clears throat> I know I started by saying that I wasn't going to do any stops and not do anything off camera and straight away I lied. Um, I was doing this and I've been messing around with it for about 10-15 minutes trying to get it all to fit back together and everything. And then I realised I'm doing it all wrong. And I think what we need to do is, I was just thinking while I was doing this, I think what we need to do is start off by perhaps putting some pen lines on here just to show which way we are so we can see now that if I put one across there then we know that it's going to go back together the same and then if I take some masking tape I'm just going to take a couple of strips of six mil masking tape and tape all this together now again I haven't tried this this is the first time I've done this um, what I'm thinking is if I tape it together I'll be able to remove it all as one big mask and then peel away the parts I want to expose rather than try and do it the other way round which is what I've been trying to do I, these Tamiya tape dispensers when they get like this they do my head in right there we go, so that's that taped up. So now I should be able to basically peel this whole thing off in one piece. I'm going to put another piece of tape across the bottom of that star. I should be able to peel this off in one piece now. Should be an opportunity where it looks like it's not going to work. Give it a helping hand. There we go, that makes life a lot easier. Now the fact that this is what he's talking about, the fact that it's semi-transparent makes it a lot easier when it comes to positioning. I can see through here where it's going to go. So, and also the fact that it's vinyl means it will stretch and slightly distort. So I'm going to put this down like this and that works for you and against you. So I'm just going to run my finger across the middle of there and then just rub it all down. Here we go, this is more like it. So yeah, the fact that it's vinyl means it will stretch, so it works for you, but also as you can see, I've pulled this one around to high heaven and tried as hard as I can to get it back on the same, and I can't. So they are reusable as long as you treat them well, and obviously I haven't treated them very well at all. So I think the thing to do now is to see if I can peel this tape off Start this piece here, and yes, I can peel the tape off, and then I should be able to put the tape down on here and use it again. Yeah, you can put the tape back on your on your masks thing there, your mask backing paper. So now I can gently peel this tape away. And the pen lines will help me to get it all realigned. So for instance, I know I'm putting the star in the right orientation because obviously, I mean, if it's perfectly cut, it shouldn't matter. That piece is wasted. If it's perfectly cut, it shouldn't matter. But um, 
if the star has a slight little difference on one corner than it does on another then you want to make sure it goes back in the same way so stick that tape down on there like so and then roll it out I wonder actually if it might be better for this to use ordinary you know this ordinary household masking tape like this not so sure um, to get the camera back so you can see what I'm doing as well right so but I'm glad I've done that so basically you saw me try and try and try to get that to go and I clipped a lot of it away to be honest because it would have been boring to watch um, but you've now seen me do it wrong so you don't have to so now I've got the whole mask on there almost all over the white but um you know for the purposes of this it doesn't really matter I'm probably going to use the one colors and everything so when we actually look at our plan here what we want is the actual star itself and the two blocks on the side to be white the rest of it we don't want white so what I'm going to do now oh I need to put those back on that paper so let's get rid of this masking tape and bin it what I'm going to do now is take the star no sorry this is where you need to be careful you see I need to leave the star and the two white bars on there and remove the piece in between and then paint that blue and then put that piece back on and paint it all olive drab so what I could actually do is take the outer off and paint that olive drab And I'm going to try and be careful not to stretch it at all. There we go. So I'll stick that back on there now. Right, so that's down there flat now, like that. So I've got this here. So what I'm going to do now is spray the outside of this, the olive drab colour. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to get another one and put that here. So we've got a, a circle with a K in it, which I believe was white with a black K. So if we do the same thing again, that will only go one way. So we don't need to mark it with a pen. Um, but what I am going to do is just put some masking tape across the K. In fact, I need to put it across the whole thing, don't I? Oh, these Tamiya tape dispensers are such a bad design. Then how else would you design them, I guess? So I'm going to try and pick this one up. And keep it all together again. Give that K the helping hand it needs. Yeah, I'm going to regret that. I should have put some tape across the bottom of there. But anyway, let's get this on here now. So I'm going to put this on there. And that's gone down fine even though I didn't actually tape across the bottom that's gone down okay so we can rub that like that and now what I'm going to do is remove this masking tape again again here and then do the same again here
rub all that down and then pull the outside off it's a white circle is it's a white yeah it's a white circle with a black K in it so take that off like that stick that down on there there we go right I've got my Iwata Revolution BR uh, with a 0.3 needle um, about 18 PSI and I've got um, Tamiya XF62 olive drab um, mixed about 50-50 with Mr. Colour Leveling Thinners. So let's see how this looks when I start painting it. So we'll just very lightly put some on. Don't want to go too heavy because if you go too heavy you run the risk of having uh, paint creep where it capillaries into the panel lines and stuff so just basically dusting it on very very lightly in fact the paint creep here won't really matter because um because the outside edges are blue aren't they yes so if we do get a bit of paint creep it won't hurt it won't matter, should I say, it won't hurt, is, I think it's a Bristolian term. So there we go, and then do the same here. And the paint creep here will matter because this is going to be a white circle. Okay, so I'm just going to put a final bit on, final bit of paint, just to get this uh, looking half decent. There we go, paint's run out. So there we are, clean the airbrush out and I'll be back. Right, so this was only painted about half an hour ago, so I'm hoping the paint is dry enough. Um, I think what we'll do is start with this circle and see how it goes. So get the vital mask and I'm just going to lay it over ready to start positioning it and I'm going to get my tweezers and yeah it's quite difficult to see where the edge of that is so um, that's something worth remembering. Um, I think I would need to use my uh, optivisor. In fact, something I might just try. I've noticed the paint doesn't stick to the masks very well at all. So I'm just wondering if I get a fine sanding sponge and just rub over the top. There we go. Look, the edge of the mask appears magically. And I'm literally putting no pressure on. This is just a very fine little uh, soft span sanding sponge and it's just going to remove the just going to remove the paint so the edge is more apparent so yeah might be worth doing this the other way round so spraying the the blue first and then putting this inside the um inside the mask so you can see there as well that the actual um, paint dust has picked up in the in the cut in the cut where the uh, where the star and the K is. So let's start again. Let's give that a quick wipe over with my thumb, which sure has not too much dust on it. So put this down in position, and then just start to move it around. get it to go into where I need it to be. Now whether I should put a gloss coat on before I do this to make the mask stick a bit better I don't know. A 
I'm sure there'll be a million people in the comments who uh, who know absolutely everything about this and they'll tell me that the, everything I'm doing is wrong which is quite normal well it's not normal it's quite usual so that's gone down there And that can't be right because I can feel the edge of the mask sticking up. And if you look, you can see, you can see the lighter patch there. So that means that mask is actually sat up on site on top of the inner one. So I'm just going to edge it back a bit. Nope, still there. It may just be the actual little tiny ledge of paint that is sat on. We shall see. As I say, we're learning this together. No, it will go down flush, look. So that needs to come. This way just a touch. There we go. It's not too bad at all this it goes down there we go that's gone down lovely so uh, yeah it's still up a bit there look which is a bit a bit annoying there we go it's gone down now so what we should end up with now In fact, I'm thinking there was no real reason to put that back on because basically I'm going to spray the K now and I'm going to mask around here anyway. So, so yeah, there was actually no reason to put that back on. Um, I need to put this one back on because I've got the blue edging to go up to it. So, and if you remember, I put the pen line so we can see that it actually goes this way on. So, uh, that was worth doing. At least I did something right today. So let's get this one off. This is going to be uh, quite awkward. I may go off camera to do this because you now get the idea of what it is I'm trying to achieve. Um, however, watching me achieve it is probably less interesting than watching paint dry. So I doubt very much that you want to see all this. Right, so now we're roughly in position. I can start. I'm going to try and do a slide it across and butt it up like that. Does that work? Kinda. No, not quite. And remember, this is going to be the edge of the blue paint, so this needs to be as good as we can get it. If this was a smaller model, I don't think I'd. Um, I don't think I'd bother. But for these great big stars and bars and the um, you know the great big round was on the Lancaster and stuff and really sort of any 30 second scale insignia really or 24 scale I would say these are um, almost a must because they are In fact, saying all that, I put those lines on and then I went and put it upside down. That's why it's not fitting. 
How stupid am I? It's not peeling the paint up, so that's another good, uh, another good little test. Here we go. And I think what I should have done is use magic marker for those lines. They would have shown through the paint better. Because as I've told you all so many times, when you've got magic marker under paint, no matter what colour you paint it or how many coats you put on, it's always going to come through. So there we go, that's gone down nicely. The one thing that does concern me with these, and we'll see how it comes out, is the where the panel lines are. I kind of wonder if... Um, I wonder if we're going to get bleed where the paint creeps under and I'm tempted to think that what I might do is start by giving it a clear coat when I'm doing it properly but we won't bother the clear coat on this we'll see how it comes out look at that there we go that's gone down beautifully and all the edges have gone down lovely you see like areas like this where there's a panel line underneath I wonder if we'll get some bleed I guess that depends on how I paint it and how heavy I am with the paint but there we are that's that down there now what I am going to do is get my magic marker and go across it I know that will show through the paint then um, So right now I want the the star to be white and I want the two little bars to be white so I need to remove the um, the surround so I'm just going to come in with my knife this is one piece of vinyl so I'm just going to try and pick up a corner like that What I want to try and avoid here is stretching anything. It's just got to be nice and gentle with it. Like Mitko says, if you treat them gently and you don't pull them about too much, you can reuse them. So I'm going to go to the other end. No, no, I'll go, I was going to go to the other end. I'll carry on. But it's not lifting any of the paint. I did no preparation to this whatsoever. And they're not lifting any paint. Um... I didn't particularly clean the area before I sprayed it. Um, I gave it a very quick rub down. I'm chasing my tail here. I'm going round in circles. Look. So let's put this back on there. Just lay that down like that. Oops. Stick it to my finger better than anything else. So just lay that down like that, and I haven't pushed it down or anything. So now we've got that there ready for the blue and um, what we'll do, we'll have a, we'll get this K out of here. There we go. And of course, if you scratch the paint underneath where in this case the K is, it doesn't really matter because you're going to be painting over it. So just peel that out of there and then lay that over. So I've done the same again, I've laid it over, laid, laid it over and not pushed it down. So there we go. Okay, so once again I got this blue XF8, uh, probably the wrong colour but it's blue. Um, I've got that mixed up with about 50-50 with Mr. Colour Leveling Thinners. I'm going to start by putting a very light dust coat on 
just to hopefully if there's any edges that want to give way or any creep this should help to seal that in stop it being a problem and yes I know I should have my mask on but I can't have a mask on and talk to you and if I go in the spray booth you won't be able to hear what I'm saying and I haven't yet worked out how to do the video and then talk over so that'll all come later as I say my um, the money I get from the advertising on here the money goes straight back into the channel I haven't had any money yet but uh, when I do here we go I'm going slightly heavier now when I do I'll um, the money goes straight back into the channel I want some lighting and I want to buy a camera because at the moment all I use is my iPhone 6 and that's it and I've got some um, editing software on my computer and my lighting I know is rubbish so let's, let's, let's air dry that back a bit let's say I think I think one of the things you have to do with these masks is go pretty lightly and not start really banging the paint on because you will get creep of course the other thing you could do is stay away from the edges like spray like this and then you know not so you're not actually spraying into the edges you will get a slightly softer edge then but in places like this on the ends it's now impossible So there we go, I think that's that pretty much done. And what I would normally do as well is I would normally mask around this because I'm going to get blue overspray on here. But for this, I'm not really worried. But basically, you would put an inch wide band of masking tape on here. And as you can see, like I keep telling you, whenever you paint, the black magic marker comes through. So that's the uh, that's a good thing. That's a good sign. Because you cannot make the stupid mistake I made just now. But then I suppose I'm stupid, so I'm going to make stupid mistakes, aren't I? There we are. That's that done. OK, so as you can see here, I've put some masking tape around the K which you should do anyway to protect the surrounding paintwork but I've only done this in case I've got any mismatch where I've put that outside back over the circle then I won't get a black line so better safe than sorry so once again I'm going to test the airbrush yeah this is um Tamiya XF1 about 50 50 with uh, Mr Color Leveling Thinners so I'm just gonna like I say very, very lightly to start with Colour in that K, come back to air, dry that off, very lightly again, colour it in, come back to air, dry it off, very lightly again, dry it off. like I said earlier what you can do is go in like this on this angle and that will make that edge soft but the thing is with something this arrow you're painting into the next angle so it's probably best with this one just stay 90 degrees apply the paint very very thinly very very light coats keep drying it back so you don't get it wet when you get it wet that's when it will capillary underneath and then one final little bit there we go job done and that is that so I'll go and clean the airbrush out and we'll come back and peel the masks away and see how it all looks. Okay, so this paint has literally been drying for about 10 minutes. So I'm just going to quickly do that. Well, I'll remove this first, actually. Remove these, um, these pieces of masking tape. Get them out of the way. And then I'm going to quickly rub this again to show me my edges that I need and that works a treat as you can see and then I'll do the same on here of course you don't have to do this but I want to reuse them so I want to put them back together again so um, if you're not going to reuse them just tear them off and throw them in the bin 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to reassemble this. Now, unfortunately, I've rubbed through there, but that doesn't matter. That's part of the weathering, um, which is another thing with doing this over using decals. Um, if you've done any pre-shading or anything, you can manage that so it shows through. You can post shade it while the, you know, and then if you want to, you can do like stuff like this and sort of weather it out a bit. I'll do, if I do the top there, just get, get a fine sanding stick and I can just weather the paint through a bit so that the white's coming through. You see, now that's something you can do with decals, but it's not this controllable. So yeah, I can do that and we'll see what that looks like when it all comes out in the wash. So let's take this um, this piece, this infill piece, let's see if I can get it back in there and then I'm going to see if I can tape it all back together and peel it off in one go. So let's have a look. Okay, I've got them all back together. All the masks are back in now. So I'm just going to put some, um, try some ordinary masking tape over the top. And maybe keep them all in one piece so I can reuse them. Let's see what happens. Um, as I say, if you're not going to reuse them, you don't need to worry about this. Just rip them off and throw them away. But um, I want to reuse these because I want to do the other side of the wing the other way round. I'm going to have some stars and bars on some um, on some dark earth and dark green English camouflage, British camouflage, should I say? So yeah, it's going to look cool. So let's uh, see how well these come off then if I've got them taped together with ordinary masking tape. And it doesn't want to lift this, I guess it's going to just want to lift the paint off them, isn't it? Rather than lift the, um, lift the mask away. So if I give it a helping hand with the corner of a blade and just give it a little lift. Come back down. There we go, it's coming away now. And there we go. Oops, that doesn't want to come. So let's start from this side. Coming from this, so I have to work towards the centre because the the mask is lifting around the K. And there we go, we got that in one piece now. So I can take this and put this back on my masking paper, the backing paper, should I say, like that. And I've got a one-piece mask again ready to be used. And this here isn't creep. This is where it was white before. But as you can see, if you look at that up close. I can't see any, there's a tiny bit of creep up there, but I'm not going to worry about that. And that is it. Um, wow, I am impressed. And if you look at the, the flatness and the fact that you know you're not going to get any silvering and you can weather it, and it's just fantastic. It's n I've never done it before, but I'm very impressed. Now let's see what this one looks like. Now, as we can see, once again, the mask doesn't want to come. The outer is coming away from the blue, but the, the first one I put on, I would suggest that maybe, just maybe, these masks improve their adhesion with time. Because look at that, it's coming off the blue easy, but it doesn't want to come away from the, from the white bit. I'm just going to get under the corner of that, give it a helping hand. There we go, that's coming away now. Beautifully. Now the star is probably going to be a bit of a problem. There we 
we go. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here. But what I'm trying to do is keep my mask in one piece. And as Mitko says in his instructions, if you treat them with care, they can be reused. And uh, I'm guessing that this means treating them with care. What I'm doing there, guys, I'm just getting the knife under the corner and then pushing it up in. Now I'm guessing that every time you use these masks you're going to add a little bit of damage so they're going to get less and less perfect. But I'm kind of thinking that these stars and bars would have been painted with masks that we use over and over again anyway. So maybe, just maybe, so I can stick that down like that and the masking tape has done a wonderful job of keeping it all flat and everything. And there we go job done so let's have a look at this to see what we think wow how beautiful is that now please don't talk to me about colors and as i said about the magic marker there's red magic marker that was on there previously from my um hgw transfer test and again we've got this fading over here that's nothing to do with the the masking that's the fact that i didn't make the white patch big enough to start with so there we go so that's that one done doing it that way around so that was painted white first then I put the mask back on and painted it green and then put the mask back on took the bits off sprayed it blue and then I put it all back together and took it off and the other thing I can do here if I get my fine little sanding sponge I can probably just rub over this and that is as flat as as flat could be and also I can weather it down if you look here, I can rub away at the blue and the white will come through and probably rub away a bit of the blue edge. I guess that's the trouble doing it this way around. If you rub through the green, the white shows through. So there we go. So on the other side, over this bit of camouflage here, I'm going to try doing it the other way around. So I'm going to put the mask on and spray the whole thing white. And then I'll take put the just put the outer on and spray it white. And then I'll put the blue bits in, or the bits that cover the white and spray the blue. Okay, or let's see how we do it when we get there. But um, basically I'll do it the other way around from this. So instead of painting white first and then, the, and then the camouflage, imagine you've painted your whole aircraft and we'll do it that way around on that side. But um, that's going to be for tomorrow now, I think. But uh, yeah, really, really nice. Really, really beautiful. And... I don't know if you can see that if I get some better light for you. They are stunningly, gorgeously flat. Obviously no carrier film, no nothing. Absolutely, totally flat. And uh, yeah, I'm very, very impressed. So this is the side that's been weathered and this isn't. And um, you saw me do it before your very eyes. You saw me cock it up and then you saw me get it right. So... This isn't a how-to video, this is a how-not-to and a how-to video. So, um, yeah, I'll see you in a minute, guys. Okay, guys, so I know I said I was going to leave it till the night, the next morning, but I thought what I'd do is another little trial. This is still the same evening. I've just finished this side, and what I've done is taken the mask off of the backing, put this on the upper side now over the camouflage part, and I'm going to leave that on there overnight. So that's going to get like 12 to 14 hours. And also you'll see that I use masking, masking tape to um, to go over the top of these to hold them together. Don't use this. It's, uh, it's not good. It's far too strong and it tries to destroy them when you lift it off. You can see that on this K here it's actually pulled the circle out of shape. So um, yeah, don't, don't use them. Um, stick with your Tamiya tape. It's a lot more forgiving. It doesn't hold it all together so well, but then... You know, it doesn't pull it all out of shape either. So, uh, so there we go. So I'll leave that now overnight. And then what I'll do tomorrow, a few seconds for you, but tomorrow for me, I'll, um, I'll get this all, uh, get this all painted up and we'll see how it looks. Okay. So here we are. It's the next day now. It's Saturday, the 16th of March and it's 12 o'clock lunchtime. 
so these have been on here for about 18 hours so um if you remember in my last little snippet i said we'll, we'll leave these on here overnight and let them see so we can see what they're like if they're left on for a long time do they leave any residue do they pull any paint do they come away nicely that kind of thing so what i've got here is we've got the outer the star the two bars and the actual lid the whole thing is on here on this wing now as you can see i've gone over the black pen lines again to make sure i get it all lined up because as you'll know even with those i still manage to get things the wrong way around so what i'm going to do now is remove all of the inner and spray the blue now what i could do i know you're probably thinking why don't i just remove the blue and spray the blue then put that back and then remove the the white but what i want to do is make sure i don't get any edges now the trouble is if if i spray this blue now and i leave this star in place i will have a blue painted area going on to a camouflaged area if then i put this back in and then reposition the star and remove the star if there's a slight overlap i might end up with a a green or brown line running up the side of the white star between the white and the blue it might be very fine but it will still be noticeable so what my plan is here is to remove all of the inside and then paint all of this blue and then put this piece back in and spray the white so basically what i'm doing is coming from the outside in so let's get on and see how this comes off um We've got a little slight edge sticking up there so i might be able to get under with my knife in fact what i think i might do is put some masking tape over this let's see if i can get it to all stay together just like it did before And a little bit over there so we'll do a nice find a corner and lift it up bar to come off with it so I need to get under that and they certainly do feel like they're stuck down pretty well compared to how they felt for what was last night for me and three minutes ago for you there we go so they're coming up they're not peeling any paint off but they certainly are stuck down a lot better than they were yesterday And as you can see it looks it's like the glue's been reactivated or something because as soon as i put it down it just wants to stay down so let's get under the corner of that star blowing a gale outside today again every day this week i think it's been uh, really windy quite fed up with it there we go yes yeah, so as you can see every time i come to a a junction if you like it's making me um it's making me peel it away separately. Oh, come on. Oh, 
dear. Right, that was hard work. So that's all off now. So now what I can do is I'm going to use some cheap masking tape for this. Mask off around the area here. Which I should have done on the other side. So I'm ready now to spray that blue. So I'll go and get the airbrush ready and spray this blue. You don't need to see that again. It'll be the same as before. I've got my Iwata Revolution um, BR 0.3 needle, um, 18 BSI, 5050, um, XF8, is it? XF8 and, um, and Mr. Hobby Leveling Thinners. So uh, I'll see you in a minute. And there's the blue on there. And I think straight away we can see this is one of the big advantages with doing this instead of decals is you can look at the panel detail on there. Um, I don't care how good your decals are, you won't get them looking that good. You, you won't get that painted on look as good as you will with paint. Um, but, you know, the, the proof will be in the pudding when we take all the masking off and we see how it looks. So I'm just going to let this go off for half an hour and then we'll, um, and then we'll do the white bits. Okay, so now I've got to uh, get this off and onto here and then remove the uh, the bits for the white. So this should be fun. Just lift that off of there. And we can see that the certain parts of it have been displaced. So um, so really it's going to be uh, it's going to be fun getting it all on. So how does it go? I believe it goes that way. Yeah. Yeah, it goes that way. So what we're going to do is just place it on, and then just push this one down into that corner. In fact, I'll do this off camera. You don't need to see me doing this. Okay, so that's on now, um, and I've pulled out the star and the two bars. Um, and what we've got to do now, there's there's a slight risk. That there could be some misalignment around the edges here and then when I spray the white I might end up with a white line around the outside so what I'm going to do is get some in fact I'll use the cheap masking tape because I'm not going to be reusing this mask again so I can just get some of this cheap masking tape and what I need to do now is cover up the edges so that I make sure I don't get any white paint in any of those um, where there could be a gap so uh, just like so making sure I don't get any masking tape over where I'm going to spray the white but making sure that I cover up every area where there's a possibility of there being a mismatch and remember guys this uh, mask where you can go back and count and if yourself it's, it's been on and off and on and off and on and off and um, it's quite remarkable that it hasn't sort of completely stretched out of shape um, and also of course we have to bear in mind that this is my first time doing this um, I may well be doing it all wrong but I think sometimes it's nice to see on a video a beginner having a go and filming all of it rather than just watching you know some professional come along and bang 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 and then you try it yourself and it's absolutely impossible um, now if if somebody out there knows of a different procedure then uh, then please tell me but um, I'm not gonna put up with any people anybody being rude or obnoxious so uh, <clears throat> right so that's all done now so I'm gonna get the white paint on there and again, you don't need to see this XF2 50 50 with Mr. Level, Mr. Hobby Leveling Thinners and um, 18 PSI through an airbrush with a 0.3 needle. So I'll see you in a second. Okay, so there we go. This paint's been on here for about, I don't know, 15 minutes. So it's still going to be a bit soft, but 
hey if we scratch it it doesn't matter I just want to get this video done and get it out there to you guys so um, let's get this masking tape off see how well it peels off of these uh... yes this is funny it, yeah, you saw me a few minutes ago trying to peel this masking tape off which was to me last night um, and I was having a nightmare with it but now if you look it comes off easily so uh, in fact it's stuck to itself harder than it's stuck to the the DN masks so there we go um, and I think you'll agree that straight away we can see here um, underneath this on this white paint where you've got the panels and everything you know if you look at the these are actually um, wing nut wings decals so they're cartograph and this was I was just doing some testing playing with them um, setting solvents and stuff because apparently these wing nut wing decals the big ones can be a bit of a nightmare so I was just playing and I had no trouble with them whatsoever you can guarantee if I was doing it on a proper model they'd be a nightmare but um, yeah I cut this one in half you can see I've used um, I can't remember now Mr. Softer Setter and I've used Softer and Setter so um, on that one but it, 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 they, they all went down the same whatever I use so uh, so it seems fine um, so let's get this tape off of here as well it's great having nails guys I can actually remove tape now um, So that's that done so now what we need to do is just remove this mask now I'm not going to reuse this again so I'm just going to take this off this time and and throw it away so you can see straight away there I did have some mismatch you can see the blue underneath the edge of that see the blue there now if I hadn't have put that masking tape around the outside that would have shown through as as a white line so um just proves that it's not all about skill common sense plays a part as well and it's actually lifted some of the paint there as well here but I'm not going to worry about that because I did no prep I just painted it and I think in fact I think this is um Ravel aquacolor mixed with water so um I guess it will be uh you know sort of pretty easy to rip away um but there's been no prep or anything so that's not what this test is all about this test is about how well these things work so I want to get under here with a knife and remove this one for the final time. God, how many times have these things been on and off? It's incredible. So there we go. We could lift that off. Yeah, and that's lifted some of that blue paint there. But to be fair, I actually probably put this down too soon after the paint so the paint was probably still soft well in fact I mean I started filming this at 12 o'clock and it's now 12 12 52 so it's, it's only been 50 minutes doing the whole thing so you can imagine you're gonna get some paint lifting but there we go and once again we've got a perfect perfect um image <laughs> a perfect i don't know what, what do you call it perfect stars and bars insignia um as i say ignore the paint lifting this was you, you can see underneath that there's a, a gloss under there so the paint was bound to lift on there in fact if i get some masking tape i could probably lift some more yeah there you go so um and the blue as I say it's 12 it's 12.53 now and I started this at 12 o'clock so that the longest that paint has been down is uh, is 40 minutes so um that's why it's lifted there but um even if it does this on your model there's no you know you can always mask and go and touch blow that back in just put some tape over it and blow it back in um the other thing you might want to consider when you're using these when you go from color to color spray some clear coat on first to seal the edge of the mask in 
and then you'll guarantee you won't get any bleed. Like if the if the mask had lifted anywhere and the white had gone through, um, you can see there's a slightly soft edge just in there where the, the mask has been on and off so many times it's probably worn out. But, um, you know, like I say, if I wanted to touch that in now, it'd be easy to just go in there, two pieces of masking tape, one there, one there, and blow that in with some blue. Um, but there we are. Like I say, it's 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 all very soft still. Um, the other thing is I wanted to show you. I've got this sort of fairly fine sanding sponge, and I know that yesterday I went over and uh, and sort of went over them. But you can actually get a if you look at this this circle K. You can get a a very very worn out distressed finish. I mean, obviously this, this paint has been on here for about 18 hours. You can see that I'm getting this very worn out, faded, distressed finish on there. Like, you know, and it's just gorgeous. It, absolutely gorgeous. And I'm really, really working at that. I'm pushing that sponge in quite hard. Um, I don't know if we can get the same over here. You can get a really, really... I would imagine this on a um, on a Corsair or something. You know, this all been in all the salt air and the sea's got to it, and uh, the sun and everything. I mean, that is just beautiful. You know, you get a really, really worn and faded finish. Obviously, on your model, you'd be a lot more precise in where you're actually rubbing, but. Um, I'm really impressed and for any large models I'm not going to be using decals again I'll be getting in touch with Mitko and saying can you please send me these one thing I would suggest um, and I will suggest to Mitko maybe somebody who's watching this can help me I think it would be a good idea if he gave a color guide to tell you actually what colors to use for the insignia I mean it kind of looks okay with that XF8 but I'm not sure maybe it needs to be a bit darker but um, I think it would be good if he gave a, what this would sand like, the unit is still so soft. No, it's okay. But that's the other beauty with that, you see a quick wipe over with a sanding sponge, and it's totally edgeless, it's just totally flat. And they are, you've got the painted on look, because they are. So there you go guys, what do you think of that? Pretty impressive stuff. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed that. It was uh, quite um, tedious at times because I just did it all wrong to start with. But I think the end results are, uh, are quite astounding. The, the, you know, the way you get in that panel line and everything and, you know, the, the, those few bits of paint peeled, that's my fault, that's not the mask's fault. And that distressed look is, uh, is quite incredible, I think. Um, so yeah, I and mean, that K as well, when you look at how that's come out, you could just just abuse it you know rub away and, and whatever but um yeah so look the guy up dnmodels.com there's his card um look him up uh have a look at his website he's got lots of stuff on there and um give this a go it's um it's it's really enjoyable really enjoyable and the end results are quite astounding so thanks for watching this guys if you've already subscribed thank you very very much um well over the 8,000, uh, 1,800 now, so 8,000 I wish, uh, well over the 1,800 now, so getting towards that 2,000, which is where I'd like to be for the end of this month, and um, and yeah, it's just getting better and bigger and, and everything, so if you haven't subscribed already, please do subscribe, give me a like or whatever, and um, if you know a better way of doing this, please, you know, or there's a website you know of that shows the better way of doing it, Put a link in the comments down below um or perhaps leave some comments down below but i'm not going to put up with any sort of sarcasm or rudeness or whatever um so i'm not interested so uh thanks for watching guys and i'll see you all soon bye bye